Hi. Um, allow me to introduce myself besides like my name. Um, I am Johari. I'm a sophomore. I'm a French and education coordinate major. I'm a black woman. I prefer she, her, hers pronouns. And I'm desensitized, but working on it. For those who do not know, desensitized is an adjective, meaning having been made less sensitive. Loud noise, for instance, can be something that you can grow desensitized to, especially if you're from a big city. Last semester, I had my first philosophy class, where in between conversations about race and gender, I was doodling eyes and drawing large words and boxy letters. I wasn't paying attention. But one day, we had a very interesting discussion that really stuck with me. After that discussion, in what felt like 30 seconds, but was actually about two weeks, I started really processing my life, all 19 years of it. It turns out that my desensitization wasn't new. It was something that I saw daily in my reactions to violence against black and brown people. I felt like I was going through an existential crisis. Here's how that mental journey happened. So, contrary to popular belief, there is no singular way to be black. The stereotypes that are widely believed, despite being disproven time and time again, are false, have been false, and forever will be false. I say this for several reasons, the biggest being the inaccurate and appalling representation of black people in the media and larger world. We usually see the help, the nanny, the abused wife, Medea, the one in a million rich person, the gangster, and the single baby mama. And those are usually played by Octavia Spencer, Viola Davis, Forrest Whitaker, Tyler Perry, Angela Bassett, and Queen Latifah. Only recently have we seen black people in the media being played by being, playing a larger variety of roles. In 2018, we got Black Panther and Wakanda. In music, we are the faces of hip hop, rap, and R&B, among other genres. Folks who aren't black want to say the no-no word because they hear their favorite black artists say it. Folks see these seven publicized storylines and think, well, this is it. I'm here to say no. Blackness is not static. It is not concrete. It is an experience and an identity that we, black people, all approach differently. They say your black is beautiful, but it's really that that is it. Your black is beautiful. It is a subjective experience. There is no one-stop shop. There is no one way to go. You determine your path, and you make it yours. Growing up, I lived in a predominantly black community, went to a predominantly black school, and was mostly around black people. I didn't really understand what my race meant in the context of other races until age nine, when I moved to a different county and attended an all-white school. And what a way to figure some stuff out. Elementary school was like a Disney Channel original movie where there was a popular, usually white girl who everyone wanted to be. Everyone definitely included me because as soon as I could realize that I could not memorize so many Kesha songs, incorrectly part my locks to match their hair, and fail to convince my mom to buy clothes like theirs, that I started to see little microaggressions happening. This life carried on for about two years until I moved back to Baltimore, where I returned to my predominantly black community, went to a predominantly black middle school, and was once again only around black people. But I changed while I was away. I started speaking properly, started to actually like Kesha and other poppy artists, and wasn't the same Johari that left Westport. I went from just Johari to Johari the Oreo, Johari who talks white. Johari, who seemed to have lost her blackness. In what felt like overnight, my race was boiled down to what I liked and how I spoke. My blackness was no longer just mine. It became how closely I matched the internalized and externalized stereotypes about black people. And I couldn't cope with that. From there, I went to high school. And it was here that for the first time in my life, I didn't have a guidebook on what being black meant. This is outside of my home, by the way. My house was a wonderful experience where I could be who I wanted to be. But in school, there were these strict rules on who I had to be in order to qualify as black. For that moment in my life, I was able to see myself as who I was and accept my race. And I went from Johari the Oreo and Johari who talks white 
and started to really love myself and love the fact that I have brown skin. So, desensitization for me happens, okay, desensitization for me happens from continuously seeing violence perpetrated in and against the black community. In the last 10 years, with the help of cell phones and the internet, the publicization of the violence against black people has found itself an almost permanent spot in the news. And just when you think you can, can process one act of violence, another one has already entered the news. We, as adults, get up in arms and angry, saying this is not how we should live. But what about the kids who grow up seeing this on TV or witnessing this in their own neighborhoods? They might just push it away, saying, oh, this is normal, and not think about it at all. They might give it a brief moment, you know, giving it what they think it deserves, because who wants to see someone that looks like them get harmed or killed? The news does a great job of adding a happy-go-lucky story after her in this one. In Baltimore, they like to use puppies. Word? Puppies. <laughs> so, desensitization happens for me like that, where you see something bad, you get all up in arms and upset, and then, ooh, puppies. You stop focusing on the most important things, and you start to see those puppies to ignore your feelings. In February of 2017, my cousin Jackie was murdered. I remember the whole night, top to bottom, up to down, I can tell you what happened, when it happened, and how it happened. Before he died, we, my family and I, had a system for how we would determine if he was safe and if we were safe. First, we would call my grandmother's house to see if they were okay and over there. Then we would call him if he wasn't there. And if he was not picking up the phone, we would call his girlfriend or his best friend. And we always got through. After he died, I remember saying that now that they had taken him away from me, I no longer cared about what happened in my neighborhood. For months afterward, I remember hearing gunshots and pretending like they didn't exist. I remember hearing that someone that I'd grow up, grown up with or someone that I'd known had been harmed or killed and say, well, that's unfortunate. I was sad. I was angry and I was detached. I was really and truly desensitized to the things that were happening in my neighborhood and in the world around me. It was a sad way to live, but it was my way of protecting myself. I couldn't really cope with it correctly, and when I started thinking about this talk, I realized that that wasn't the first time that I'd seen violence in my neighborhood. I remember being little and seeing the police forcefully arrest the father of one of my friends. It just took me a couple of years to catch up. So, reconciling the expectations of my blackness versus the realities of it have made being desensitized really easy and have made feeling things really hard. When you grow up, you come up with these expectations that people give to you, whether they're positive or negative. We all expect a lot out of life, and as a result, we're going to expect a lot of the people around us. It gets a little fuzzier when you start having those expectations help you align with these character tropes that we talked about earlier. I don't want to feel like I have to align with some character that somebody created. I don't want to feel like I have to be the good black girl who's smart and beautiful and like is obedient and follows all rules, breaks all barriers, and takes care of her family and does everything right. Those are too high expectations for me. I also don't want to feel like I have to align with the angry black girl concept who's loud and aggressive and uncivilized. I don't deserve that. I also don't feel like I have to be compared to or be the spokesperson of someone who's committed a crime or someone who's been harmed or killed and then slandered by the media to justify that harm. One bad egg can ruin the bunch, but why does that seem to be the only problem with the brown ones? My realization of my desensitization was a culmination of a lot of things making sense. It was me realizing that I was angry about the things that were going on in my community and that I was ignoring them. In high school, I had a scenario happen that has been a source of contention for me recently. I used to take public transportation to get back and forth from school, and I had a friend that I used to ride the bus with. She was white, and I called her my mom as like a joke. Like We had this thing going where I'd be like, hey, mom, what's up? And like that was it, because we spent a lot of time together on the bus and we'd built up a pretty good relationship. One day, we had 
a topic of facial features up here in our conversation, and she told me that she had the black nose and that I should be the white one. I was taken aback. I wasn't offended at the first jump, but I also was uncomfortable. I wanted to say something, but if I did, that would be seen as too sensitive. And I, at that moment, couldn't align with like this angry person. If I had said something, I would have been seen as too sensitive. I would have been seen as too reactive. I would have been seen as just too upset, too emotional. And now that I look back on this, I am angry. I am hurt, I feel annoyed. Like, why would you say something like that? What gives you the right to determine what I should be based on my face? That is what's happened over the past, over those two weeks, where I would see these incidents happening and I would relive them and I would have all the emotions that I've put away come back and find themselves at a really broad and really elevated level. So, now we are here. What do you do? When I was thinking about all this, I got upset and I was, didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know how to feel. How do you feel? How do you deal with trying to live in this world where it's really easy to just push past things? Is it possible to be happy and to be sensitive? Do I want to be emotionless? Do I want to just not feel anything and live my life as if I am just half, looking forward, no way to go. Well, as the great Ella Mae once said in her song, Boot Up, feelings, so deep in my feelings. We have feelings that we deserve to feel and we do not have to put them away. Sensitivity is not weakness. Emotion is not weakness. Crying is not weakness. Feel what you need to feel to cope with how this world goes because it is hard. The things we see every day, they can be difficult. We absorb the news like it's water. We see horrific events happen all the time and we push past it. We offer our thoughts. We offer our prayers, but we don't offer ourselves the chance to feel it out and live through how horrendous something might be. Understand that it is okay. Please, I implore you to do what you have to do to cope. Do what you have to do to get that emotion in and out and to feel like you can exist. Our generation especially has a problem with emotion. We have memes talking about, oh my God, I don't want to get in my feelings, but why? Feel what you need to feel. Feel happy, feel sad, feel angry, feel everything that you have in you because you deserve to do that. I will end with this. When I was little, my mom used to tell me to stop that crazy crying. I was a crybaby. I cried about every little thing. I was the worst type of person. But <laughs> she, <laughs> she told me one day that one day you will build up tough skin. You'll be able to deal with anything that the world throws at you. You'll be able to succeed without faltering. But you have to stop that crazy crying. And she was kind of right. I did grow up and I do have tougher skin. I can deal with a lot of things and I'm a lot more resilient than I was. But I never stopped crying. Thank you. <laughs>